So just doing my morning routine of getting my babies all fed. So here's for the first three, Frank, Eva, and Ellie get fed and taken care of first. They already went out went potty. I'm adding canned dog food and Isabella's helping herself. She is a pain. She does this all the time. She does drive me nuts. So as I mix up, this is Frank. He had the rest of the canned dog food that Isabel didn't eat, but he's on medication too. So I usually just pop one of his pills in and this big guy is good to go. If I can get the pill bottle open. Oh, I can. Um, <clears throat> so he's a uh, seven. So he does have, he's on meds. He has a, um, some kind of a, sore that comes and goes on his back hawk and um, this just helps keep it in check so he's been on that he is uh seven so that's frankie's and the girls will have cottage cheese so as i get um the breakfast ready um <laughs> he's waiting licking his chops and he has drool on his he must have drooled and flipped it because He's got it across his head. He's our only drooler, huh, Frank? But he's hoping the kitty does not get into his food because he's ready for breakfast. So this is Nala's breakfast. So she has half puppy food, half <clears throat> her adult regular food. She has cottage cheese in here. And I have put some milk, or just our regular cow's milk in there uh, for her. So this is what she's eating. Um, and I have already started feeding her more than once a day. Thirsty. So, so I have Nala outside right now. She goes out by herself now because uh, she is pregnant. And uh, the other two that she normally goes out with horse around. Diesel is very rough. And um, she's pretty pregnant. So, uh, she's over 30 days now. And I took a peek at her yesterday when I was checking out some of the other girls and she's pretty loaded. I, everywhere I see, I see sacks. So, and I did start to think that before then because um, when I when I was looking at her, I was like at 30 days, she already had a belly coming. So, I mean, normally, sometimes you can't even really tell appearance wise at 30 days because um, if they don't have big litters, they don't start to puff up that early. But um, Nala is indeed pretty full. So um, I do have to um, let the people know, some of the people know about some of the results that I had gotten from some of our ultrasounds and uh, let them know kind of what's going on. Hi, Nali. Good morning. She's so sweet. So Nala is um, Ebby and Farley's daughter, and um, Farley is Fiona's son. So she's third generation. She's going to have fourth generation for uh, um, here um, with our line. So it's kind of kind of exciting. Um, uh, she is pregnant with Diesel. Diesel's our tan point. This is Diesel's first litter. Hi, beautiful. You ready for breakfast? <laughs> uh, Diesel's our, our beautiful tan point. He's the goofiest little thing you ever did see. He has a lot of personality, just like Hurley, a goof troop, wants to play, loves people. Um, he's just a big baby. And uh, they should balance each other nicely. But um, we will have, Nala will have puppies <clears throat> April. Seventh, I believe, is our estimated. Oh, she's gotta go back out. Estimated um, due date for her. She could have them sooner. Oh, she's playing with herself with a piece of ice. They do love ice. Um, I started pooper scoop in the yard yesterday. Um, out here with my ice pick. I did pretty darn good. I got about a quarter left to do, and then I'll start back around. Um, in New Hampshire, it's been nothing but cold. Today is only going to be mid-20s. We have a big day planned with our family. Um, that should be fun. <clears throat> but uh, I am still waiting to confirm uh, Eva. I do have results for Magnolia. Um, 
but I'll wait until I contact families and on her waiting list and let them know before I announce too much. So Nala is anxiously waiting for her breakfast. Go, oh, sweetie. Um, she has her water there. So everybody has blankets and you notice really the only one that has blankets is this guy. So you can see what he does. He is such a brat. He, uh, he pulls everyone's blankets through the kennel. Come on. So, uh, so I give them old sheets and you can see what Diesel does. He pull, This is what he does. He pulls them through so he has them all. Yeah, he's a little menace. So this is, you can see he's got everybody's blankets. He's got all Nala's too. He also did have a raised dish. And, um, oh, here he comes. <laughs> he's such a monster. He is your mama's little monster. He decided to um, take his, dish, his little dishes out and um, chew his plastic. Chew the plastic like that. So... Hi, buddy. It's all excited. So, I he has this now for food, and it just comes out. And there's his little water dish. So he, I didn't order him another raised dish like what Nala has right now. He's going crazy with his blankets because he's a menace. Look at him. Yes, you're a menace. Okay, are we ready to go potty? What do you think, handsome? He he's such a good one. Go somebody else's dish. Are you ready to go out? And he likes also taking um, blankets and bringing them downstairs. You could just hear him ripping. So when they get to the shredded that they are now. So these are the dishes that I got from Chewy. I originally bought these ones. Um, the little guys use them for their water. I mean, we fill them up like several times a day, so it's almost better to use a bigger one. But it is for food or water. It clips right to their crate, their kennel, whatever you want to call it. And these bowls just pop out. So you just, that part, that part stays with the kennel. These come out in and out. You can wash them and everything else. So I have... I have some of the smaller ones and I just got these. I accidentally ordered those. I wanted the big ones. So because I have Diesel that um, loves to chew on stuff, so I got him the big one. And the big one, it's through Midwest, it says. But I mean, it holds eight cups, eight fluid cups. So it holds about four cups of dog food, and that's what they all eat. Whoops, sorry. That's what they all eat is um, uh, four cups at a time, twice a day, most of ours, unless they're pregnant, then they get more. Um, unless they're hungry, then we feed them more too, so I guess it does fluctuate. But I did buy Diesel this, and I would recommend it if you have one of those um, chewers, like we do, and they work great. Um, so I always have like an abundance of stuff. I have, so I had to think of what I could get in there for him. He has bones and toys, but you see his main fun is um, pulling the blankets through and stealing the girls' blankets. So um, we do use stainless steel bowls too. We don't use plastic. Um, with Great Dane, sometimes if you use plastic, um, they're known to get like some of them will get acne under their chin so i just feel like stainless steel is easier to clean if i want i could pop these in the dishwasher and they're they're gonna come i just feel like there's not gonna be any bacteria like if a plastic one gets scratched i just feel like oh it just doesn't seem as sanitary as the stainless steel ones and the stainless steel ones are durable um especially these um snappity fit bowls uh they never get dented either like their other ones that came with the raised dishes if they step on them they can dent them a little bit but these guys they don't get dented they are actually very heavy duty i'm really impressed with these and they're not really that expensive the smaller ones we use for water but i did buy the big ones the big ones have been back ordered or out of stock so i just got lucky and they came in 
in um in stock and i was able to get the big the big ones because we do have great danes and i wanted them for not just water but for food and even if i um and even if i had them for water i would have to fill a lot less because their room tends to get hot so sometimes we'll even even now that it's march we'll run their fan in there because um it's warm up there and having why it's warm up there too is um by breeding great danes and having them we have puppies like all different times of the year so if we have puppies in the winter we do live out in the country we do lose power a lot we just um we had a bad windstorm uh last week last tuesday it was super windy here um, we're not used to like 30 mile an hour winds here but we had like 23 mile an hour winds here and being out in the country it knocked down power power was out first it flickered it went out a few times during the night and then when i got up i had no power i ended up staying home from work that day only because um I do commute to work it's very windy i didn't feel safe being on the road we had no power and we had some limbs down so that was something that we needed to take care of so um no matter where we live we make sure we always have a second heat source that we don't need power so we do have a wood stove here and um, we have had litters in the winter and it'd be like they're a day old and we have no power so that can be very scary um, when you have one day old puppies. We don't use heat lights for our puppies because we keep our house warm. We kind of always loved wood stoves, so we always kept our house pretty warm, but um, the way this house is set up, there's a wood stove in our den and it actually heats the whole upstairs. And that's where my whelping rooms are. They are upstairs. So they're in the warmest rooms in the house. <clears throat> which are also the smaller rooms um, so that's why we have a wood stove we do cut our own wood off our own land here um, we have 16 acres so we started last year cutting our own wood um, splitting it and stacking it and we've had wood all this year from our own land so that's really rewarding for us too because that's what we want like we want to live in a place where we can kind of sustain that um, at our old house we had a wood stove too but we had to pay for wood because we only had a quarter acre and definitely wasn't any kind of trees that we could um, harvest ourselves so we have tons of trees here um so my husband loves to go out and cut wood and stack it and he's got like piles here and there waiting for next year so we always have a wood stove <clears throat> that's what keeps us warm that's what keeps our puppies warm if we have no power we can put stuff on top of the wood stove to like a can of soup um, because we do live way out here, our, we have a well, so our well also does not work without power. So that's kind of, um, we do make a list of like things that we want to do. Getting maybe a generator for small things is on that list of to do and get going. You'd be surprised though, the time kind of just flies when you move to a place and you think of all these things that you want to get done and then you say, oh. Have I been here three years almost? But we're still like modifying things like we had to do our floors because it did have beautiful floors when we moved in and you'll see some of our old pictures, our floors are scratched up. It was not that way when we bought this house. It's because we have nine Great Danes that actually live inside and scratch up the floors. So we did um, all new floors <clears throat> in most of the common areas and um, we are modifying are renovating our bathroom upstairs and we're doing it by ourselves so it's taking longer but we're coming along so i have been documenting that journey also when i finally get it done i'm going to post before and after pictures because it's really gratifying when you see the complete project but <laughs> that was a doozy um so the upstairs bathroom was really old and the tiles were falling off when you showered in there so uh yeah we had to we really even if we didn't like the style we had to do it because it was leaking water in the behind the walls of the tiles so um, we have gotten so far of demoing it um uh, being in a 1970 house you had to do all the plumbing so that was a challenge for my husband i'm good at doing some things i definitely not good at plumbing 
um, once the plumbing was done <clears throat> then we had to do new flooring um, it is shiplap so I wanted to match the shiplap so I'm fine with that so we did I redid the walls they used to have a shower stall um, we have a shower stall in our other bathroom so I just really wanted a clawfoot tub we are fans of the old-fashioned clawfoot tub so we did that we changed out the mauve toilet for a white one so just like little things like that really update your home um the only and we kind of did it in phases so now it's like the last phase is kind of changing out the vanity um i'm going to keep the vanity bottom i'm just going to change out the top because it's a custom made vanity and i kind of think it goes with the farmhouse i like the look of it i just don't like the top <clears throat> It's that, um, just like tiley, it's just one of those from mica countertops and I don't like it. So we're changing out, uh, just have basically the uh, vanity area to change out and my bathroom will be done. But the bathtub works, the toilet, the sink, all that stuff still works. It's basically, I'm about 80% done with that bathroom. So that was another thing that we did. We still have a bunch of other things that we want to change, um, but it, everything's in due time and we do work and we do have, um, you know, quite of other responsibilities like everybody else. So we're just doing it at our own pace. Um, with COVID, we wouldn't be able to hire somebody anyway because the floor started with hiring somebody to do it and then COVID happened and I said, well, let me just see if I can do it myself and I kind of learned how to do it and I love doing it now so if I want to do I did the bathroom floor upstairs I really love the um planking because it's pretty durable there's no scratches on our floor um I still have to go around and do more edging this is diesel and mag so here's diesel special dish Maggie's wondering what's for breakfast it's cottage cheese today mag so I get a dab of cottage cheese. I didn't put any milk in it. Sometimes I'll put a little water to make it like gravy train-ish. But they don't seem to mind. Maggie and Diesel aren't picky eaters. But so this is the water going out for our ducks and chickens. These two are just waiting to go up and eat. But see how they horse around so much. <laughs> Nothing gets by them. And this is why we go through a couch once a year. Ah, 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 buddy. He's dying to tear that up. Mom's watching though. You guys ready for breakfast? Little goons. So they come down, go potty, get the energy out and then they go up and eat and they'll take they eat in their kennels so it gives them downtime to relax after they eat <laughs> oh what's that yeah might as well get a drink of the chicken's water it's fresh so i'm gonna get these guys up and fed <laughs> Diesel, we don't chew on collars. That's why normally they don't have their collars on, but look at her, she's gonna get them. So these are the last three that I have to feed, Fiona, Farley, and Ebby. Do you live here? What's a code? What's a passage? <laughs> he said I live here. You can see our door gets scratched up quite a bit. Hi, buddy. Good morning. Got an itch? Goodness, Abigail already came in. Huh, Ebby. He's all out of breath. So he's the one I'm trying to slim down. <laughs> Hot chubby. Ebby is our lean cuisine. Yes, you're a lean girl. All excited about I don't know what. What's he doing, Abigail? She loves to um, play with him and thrash on him. She actually can get the better of him. You got eye boogies today, Ebby. Hmm, she don't care. And it is always exciting to look at George's little activity thing here. So that's why you always see buckets in the videos. <laughs> it's because we live in New Hampshire and we have to lug water to our birds every day. Um, oh, I'm hot. So just to let everybody know that we did double check Magnolia. Um, she was 30 days 
um, this last Thursday or Friday. So I did double check her yesterday. She did not get pregnant, so she's not pregnant. Um, with that being said, <clears throat> everybody that's on her list will go to Nala, um, Nala's list because Nala is pregnant and um, like I said earlier, she, I looked at her too, she is pretty loaded with puppies. I still don't know about Eva, it's still too early for her, so I'll know in a couple of weeks for Eva too, but um, that's the way it is. Um, sometimes when you first breed them, you don't really know when they ovulate and timing really is everything. So I have a feeling that Maggie ovulated later and we missed it. Um, we bred her <clears throat> our normal days, which is, let me see, we did her four days, four different times. Um, but it just, we still didn't pinpoint the right day for her ovulation so I did double check a few times just to be sure that it wasn't just a late bloomer because we have had them a week behind but normally at 30 days even if she's a week behind she'd be about 20 at least by 25 days you can see sacks they're tiny um like you first saw Nala's but you can see them so she's definitely not not pregnant not this time so we will try again in 30 days with her and see <clears throat> now that we know like what didn't work we can pinpoint it for breeding her next time and you kind of learn that way um that's why we always will breed multiple dogs because we know um sometimes it doesn't always work that way and you end up with less litters it happens a lot actually so we do have nala and the people that have been on maggie's list will go to nala's so Nala was bred with Diesel. They should have some amazing looking puppies. Um, I'm really excited about this. And then we still have to wait on Eva another couple of weeks to see if she's pregnant or not. <clears throat> but um, I'm hoping she is. She does seem to have the hungers, but sometimes even if they're not pregnant, they'll go through the motions because Eva was like that last time when we didn't breed her. So um, we'll wait and see. You know, I'll, I'll make... I won't say anything until I know for sure, like I did a Magnolia, but um, I will contact the people on her list and just um, tell them, you know, they're gonna go to Nala's list. We always try to keep um, <clears throat> keep the people on the list first. Um, where Mag, where, excuse me, where Nala didn't only had a singleton last time, I wasn't sure if it was her or just a fluke but obviously it was a fluke again that was nala's first time we obviously didn't get the timing right the first time and she had a singleton this time she almost looks like her mother i she's pretty loaded so i'm excited to see that um you know a little bum that maggie didn't but uh, mother nature has a way it's working its own course so it is what it is i am getting ready for nala's litter because um, even if Eva's pregnant, Nala will be delivering first. So we've gotten the puppy room ready, the whelping room, should I say. Um, I've got uh, it stocked up. I got my vinyl, um, yeah, my gloves for, I wanna try to do this natural with her. I've got some new um, absorbent pads that I wanna try out that are washable that I see other breeders use. So I was kind of curious and I said, well, try those so i got baby wipes um we got our goat's milk um we buy that um because we do supplement if it's a big litter or if when the puppies are get their teeth and they're ready to eat around three or four weeks they do get um a formula in with their food and we have our own like recipe that we use and we do use goat milk as one of the ingredients so i pick that up when i picked up our dog food so we're stocked up on our dog food <clears throat> we just bought uh probably like 30 bags of dog food um our 20 bags that we rain checked finally came in plus we had been um kind of storing or trying to go to the different tractor supplies to get it because there seemed to be a shortage and that's not what I want. I don't want to have to change the dog food and disrupt all their uh, bellies. So Nala has started her puppy food mix in with her dog food 
and is eating more meals. She's um, actually day 33 or 34 and she has a belly already. So that's a really good sign. And when I looked yesterday, she's really patient with me. Maggie, you saw how she is. She hates it. Maggie's getting better though. Um, why we do um, ultrasound too is I do it more frequently so they get used to the machine just like cutting the nails if you start young and keep cutting them they'll get used to it just like baths if you do it regularly they'll be better with them same with an ultrasound machine so when they see it like Eva just kind of lays down she doesn't even care um Maggie's getting better she's better than she was when I first started so that's a good sign <clears throat> Um, we do use the ultrasound for more than just seeing, confirming pregnancies. It also, the reason why we really got our ultrasound is because um, Eva's litter, um, her first litter that she whelped normal with me, um, she had X amount of puppies. We did an x-ray and they said, oh, there's either seven or eight. Well, she only delivered seven. So I was like, oh, they were pretty close. It was seven. So she had seven. Um, two days later, she passed number eight. So my husband was home. He called me, he's like, we got a dead puppy. And of course my heart was like, oh no, thinking it was one of hers that we had delivered. But no, it was a, a big fawn puppy that she had retained and passed two days later. We got very lucky that she passed this puppy on her own. Um, she could have gone septic and died. She could have gone septic and her milk getting, you know, her milk could have got tainted and killed her rest of her litter. So after that point, I invested in an ultrasound. So when they're done whelping, I take out the ultrasound and I check their, be their bellies for any more skeletons. Um, you, she just shut down. She was like done. So I didn't, I mean, Eva's kind of a thick girl. So I didn't think that there was another puppy plus the vets, the reproductive vets said seven or eight. So I'm like, oh, they were seven. They're seven. <clears throat> so that's why we ultrasound after to make sure there's no remainders if i had known i could have brought her into the vet get a shot of oxytocin and that puppy could have been passed probably alive he was a i believe it was a boy he was a big boy too he's very um she has beautiful puppies so it was a you know i was just um so relieved that um eva was fine so we do that every time now if we well at home and it's always our goal to whelp at home. Um, I am going to try to whelp Nala at home. I want these to she, her to know that these are her babies. When she had her singleton, she didn't know it was her baby. She kind of growled at him because she, she just didn't know, like, where did this come from? You know, so that's our goal, to whelp at home. That's our update. Um, Maggie's not pregnant. Nala is. We're still waiting to see um, about Miss Eva. So uh, we do have people contact us all the time and um, <clears throat> we do take deposits. Um, but what we say is if you don't get on these litters, you'll just go to our next litters. Our next litters <clears throat> most possibly will be our next breed uh, breedings will be with Lexi. And um, I believe she's going to use Hurley and Ebby would be the next one. So if we were going to breed Ebby, she would be next and... Um, and Lexi also. So those would be the next one. So if people um, don't get a puppy from one of these litters, they would go to Lexi or or Ebby. Um, so that's what our plans are. And, um, <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> Magnolia will be bred in another six months to see if we can try to pinpoint her a little bit better, but that will be in six months from now. So that's our plans for 2021, the spring.